Welcome back, everybody. For the past two years, we've done a show here at the end of the year, and it's become somewhat of a tradition, just sort of picking out the top five guns and gear that we reviewed throughout this uh, year. So basically, to be eligible to be selected, the review had to actually go live in 2016. So we're breaking it up into two different categories. We're going to do top five guns reviewed and then top five pieces of gear. So this episode, we're doing guns. So um, really, there's no criteria for it. I tried to make up a set of criteria when I originally came up with this video concept in terms of like, was it innovative? Did I really like it? Was it reliable? Whatever. Um, and what I found was uh, just after looking through the videos, certain guns I just really like uh, for several different reasons. And we'll kind of go over that with each one of the guns. So um, without going further, and these are not in order, they're just top five. If I had to pick five, four, three, two, one, it would just be a whole other process of me uh, having to lay this video out in my mind. So we'll get to it. And uh, the first one here is going to be the Aero Precision AC-15 rifle. So this rifle is highly modified since you guys saw it in the uh, original video. We've added uh, Magpul stock, Tango down grip, BCM uh, trigger guard, as well as the cross machine and tool, MWOC rail, and a bunch of other accessories on there. We have the uh, Steiner P4XI um, variable power scope sitting in an American defense mount. Uh, and really, this rifle is awesome. One thing I want to do here is just kind of pull that back and let you guys, I don't know if you can see it or not there on camera, but that bolt carrier group used to have a logo on it. It still does. It's just so dirty uh, from being shot so much and not cleaned at all that you just can't see it anymore. This rifle has more than impressed me. Um, I believe I picked this up originally for like $629 at uh, Brownells. And probably right now it's even cheaper since it's post-election. But uh, for a rifle at this price point, this thing has been, it's been 100% reliable, so you can't do any better than that. And it's shot really good groups, has a good recoil and pulse, and really everything you ask it to do, it does, at least so far anyway in my testing. So the Aero Precision AC-15, uh, definitely in my opinion, the budget rifle of the year for sure that we reviewed, and uh, it goes on the list in terms of top five. Getting away from the modern sporting rifle, if you will, with this one, this is the Henry Repeating Arms All Weather 3030 that we reviewed. Now, I should point out, I do have uh, two other Henrys in right now for review. We have a uh, 357 Magnum Silver Boy, I believe it's called, as well as the uh, 4570 Case Color Hardened Rifle. Um, but this one, the review we did actually this year, I actually put out, I think, another Henry review, but this one I just really like. It's lightweight, it's handy. I love that chrome finish and the uh, all weather wood on there because I'm not nice to my guns. I probably should be, and it probably makes some of you guys out there mad, <laughs> but I'm really not. And uh, this rifle was plenty accurate. Of course, the 3030 is still a good caliber for most uses, whether they be defense, defensive or hunting here in the US. Um, so all around, just an awesome gun, real smooth action good capacity. If you're in a band state, I think it's absolutely a uh, potential for a defensive use rifle if you guys can't use, you know, some other modern type rifles. And one thing I want to point out again, because this video didn't get a lot of views, and honestly, I think it should have, um, is that Henry uh, donated rifles to uh, a friend of mine, his family. He's a, uh, a combat veteran, a special operations veteran, and a personal friend of mine. Uh, we, we were deployed together at one point in time in Iraq, and uh, he's just a good dude and uh, was very new to personally owning uh, firearms. I asked Henry to uh, see if he'd be involved in doing sort of like a giveaway and just kind of get him and his family into personally owning firearms, and he was open to it. And uh, Henry went way beyond what I would have expected. Uh, they actually kicked in rifles for each of his children as well. Um, so I'm going to put a, a link here in the video for you guys to check that video out. But it says a lot about Henry, uh, the company, and who they are, that they support our vets like that. And I... Uh, uh, while we're focusing on the top five, and this is the gun that made the list, in my opinion, uh, I definitely want to um, remember what Henry did for, for my friend and, uh, you know, somebody who is a, really a national hero in a lot of ways. Getting back into the MSR category, if you will, of modern sporting rifles, this one is the CZ 805 Bren. Now, I actually got one of the first ones that came into the country, um, the Flat Dark Earth version, especially, were really hard to find this year. I expect probably next year they'll start seeing those uh, more and more on the shelves, but these rifles are simply awesome. Um, you guys know some of, somewhat of the history from my review, but um, it has been adopted by the Czech military and has seen combat use in Afghanistan and I'm sure other places. Um, 
It's got a nice lightweight barrel, although it is a little bit heavy due to all the milled construction on there. It still is a very good handling rifle with the piston driven operation system. It has been 100% reliable, uh, whether suppressed or not suppressed. Um, had good accuracy. The ergos are good. The controls are very familiar for AR users. Uh, there's a couple downsides for sure. Um, the lack of rail space up front. We actually put these um, uh, 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 precision uh, rails on there, the MWOC. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. We also put their pins on there, k &S Precision, excuse me. Um, put those on there, it really added to the modularity of it and took off some of the cheese greater 1913 rails. But all in all, this rifle has been awesome. Flawless performance, like we talked about in terms of uh, reliability. So that always is the number one thing for me. And uh, in terms of just bring something cool to the market. CZ certainly did it here with the, of course, we have our folding stock as well, which I know a lot of folks out there like the uh, compactness of it all, but really just a good rifle all the way around cold hammer forge barrel. And on there, since some of you guys may ask, we have the uh, primary arms ACSS uh, Trichicon TA31, as well as the uh, new Enforce uh, WMLs for this year. So you can see it's a easily outfitted rifle for just about any kind of use that you would, uh, would assign to it. This year we only have one pistol that made the list and I really don't know why that is. It's just arbitrary again in my mind from what I look through from my videos and it's going to be the Canik TP9SF. This uh, particular pistol was something that the U.S. market asked for for a long time. Uh, they wanted the great trigger of the uh, SA version without the decocker so a lot of folks were worried about that so uh, Canik did deliver. This is the flat dark earth version here as you can see I believe it comes in black as well. Um, this one went through that a uh, thousand round continuous fire chest and actually has been fired a good bit since it's got about 2500 rounds on it at this point and uh still a uh, real good performance i think we've had one malfunction through it uh the entire time and uh, we got some talon grips on there but the thing about this pistol that's just awesome is of course the trigger is fantastic it's as good as any out there on the market for a striker fired pistol um and the price point is just crazy. I think these right now, I just looked today before uh, making this video, I saw them several places for $310 to $320 shipped. So for for what you get, which is a cold hammer forged barrel, uh, great accuracy, good reliability, as you guys have seen, you get the ex ability to mount accessories here on the rail. Um, this particular one has the uh, excess big dot sights on it that um, are also awesome. The ability to have aftermarket sites certainly is good. And I don't see that going down. I only see that going up. I, look, I think more and more companies will offer that. And uh, you get great capacity as well. It's 18 plus one. Um, really, there's not a whole lot more you want to ask for a pistol, a particular one that's going to come into market sub $350. Um, years ago, I did a review of these, the original Kinex that came into the country, and people were really skeptical of them. And uh, I've really always had pretty good things to say about them because objectively speaking, they've been good performers here on the channel. And I think more and more now that more and more people are getting these, um, less people are questioning that and people are just starting to accept that they're really good guns for a really good price point. So uh, definitely this year, this was one of the uh, top pistol performers on the channel. And the last gun to make the list is going to be the BCM Mark 12 rifle that you see here. Uh, this one comes in a couple different variants. One with the uh, collapsible stock that we have here. They also come in a fixed stock variant, fixed stock variant, I should say. And if you guys are really looking for info on the Mark 12s, definitely check out my video. I go into painstaking details on the history of the program as well as this particular rifle and how it relates to it. But this thing is just awesome. 18 inch barrel, it's a tack driver. As you guys who watch this video know, it was uh, pretty much tied for my most accurate rifle I've ever reviewed and tested here on the channel. And that's saying something that includes bolt guns and many other, you know, really high-end rifles in terms of uh, the ac absolute accuracy that we saw out of this rifle. It's just a tack driver. And, of course, the military pedigree of it just makes it even cooler. It's just the history is all in there. And uh, during the test, we used this particular scope, the primary arms 1x8. Uh, I still haven't figured out which one I'm going to put on there. Uh, next year, we're going to do uh, get sort of a more authentic scope to it and then paint it up in a sort of homage to the real world Mark 12s out there. But this rifle, uh, flawless performance in terms of uh, reliability is, as I always demand of pretty much any gun that's going to get on this list. Um, there may be exceptions here and there, but just all the cool accessories from PRI that are actually authentic to the gun. The collar on there, the Mark 12 collar. I don't have the suppressor, unfortunately. I wish I did, but I don't. And uh, BCM's recreation of the original break. Um, just the details on it are awesome. And of course, with Bravo Company, um, 
they don't put out junk. They only put out good rifles, and this one certainly is no exception and definitely has sort of a cool, uh, as nothing fancy would call it, second type of cool factor to it. And I, I agree with that term on this. It's just cool, and, and when you feel it, when you fire it, um, you kind of get an idea of what it might have been like to carry one, of course, on a one-way range, not a two-way range, which is certainly a good thing. I should also mention that we have that Geissele trigger in there, which is just awesome and definitely aided in the accuracy that we saw out of this rifle out there on the range. That's all five guns there. Now, of course, we reviewed plenty of other firearms throughout the year. Uh, this year, I put up a lot of videos, particularly starting, I think, in May or June when my work schedule freed up a little bit. I was really able to start cranking them out. I think I put three or four up every single week uh, following June of this year. So uh, that's a pretty good production schedule, a lot of guns, a lot of gear in there. And these ones were, were guns that I really thought brought something special to the table. And uh, really, I just enjoyed and I'm probably not going to get rid of anytime soon. So uh, all these guns will probably continue to be, be seen in the channel in uh, 2017 and probably beyond that. But uh, if you guys have any questions about these particular guns, definitely first go check the particular video of it out. And I probably cover it if I didn't cover it there or in this video. By all means, post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. Um, as of the day I'm shooting this video, it's December 26th. We'll do a little bit of editing, get it up soon. And then soon following that, we're going to do the top five pieces of gear reviewed in 2016 as well. So that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. And we hope to see you in the next video.